My name is Caitlin Urban, and I am going to be presenting my poster on James K. Polk, the most underrated president in American history. The 19th century was a defining time in history filled with war and political change. James Polk was the 11th president of the United States. He is one of the most underrated presidents in American history. His annexation of Texas and involvement in the Mexican-American War sparked opposition on both sides of the aisle. His decisions for Manifest Destiny doubled the size of the country, but also attempted to eradicate the culture of many living in this territory. He was very political and diplomatic with his decisions regarding the war. Overall, he is one of the most interesting resumes as a president, but has been overlooked in history. James Polk was born on November 2, 1795, when the United States had only been a country for a little over 20 years. His home state was North Carolina, where he graduated from the University of North Carolina with a degree in law. He worked for a law firm out of college, but only stayed there a short time. He was friends with an up-and-coming politician named Andrew Jackson. When he moved to Tennessee, he was on the state legislature in 1825. He ran for office and was a member of the United States House of Representatives. He served here from 1825 to 1839. After his time as a representative, he was elected the governor of Tennessee. During the years from 1839 to 1844, Polk focused on his presidential campaign. He was seen as the promising Democratic candidate. He stood firm on the expansionist viewpoint because his opponents, Martin Van Buren and Henry Clay, were opposed. He believed in Manifest Destiny which was the view that it was America's God-given legacy to expand West and beyond. Van Buren and Clay did not want to approve the annexation of Texas, but Polk had wanted Texas along with the Oregon Territory, especially California. This created his campaign slogan, 5440 or fight. This referenced the territory line that would divide America's Western land with British controlled Canadian territory. Polk won the presidency thanks to his friend Andrew Jackson, who had pushed for the Democratic candidate in office. Polk won by a thin electoral college vote. He took office on March 4, 1845, at the age of 49. He was the youngest president at the time. Congress offered to accept the annexation of Texas. President Polk agreed, and Texas became a state. Mexico viewed this as an aggressive diplomatic movement, and tensions began to rise. The Mexican-American War began when American forces tempted the Mexican forces along the Rio Grande River. There was an ongoing disagreement over where the actual border between Mexico and Texas should be located. America believed it was the Rio Grande River, and Mexico believed it was the Nueces River. In the beginning, Polk did not want war. He wanted negotiation. He tried multiple times to buy land from Mexico, but they refused. He sent General Zachary Taylor and his army of regulars to sit across the border from Matamoros as bait. Polk knew the Mexicans would fight if they saw an American presence unannounced and on their land. He wanted them to make the first move so he could accuse them as attacking the United States. The Mexicans did attack first, killing 63 Americans by ambushing their camp at night. President Polk took this attack to Congress as provocation to justify war with Mexico. He pled that Americans tried at all costs to avoid war, but there were innocent victims in this vicious attack. He said, the strong desire to establish peace with Mexico on liberal and honorable terms and the readiness of the government to regulate and adjust our border and other causes of difference with that power on such fair and equitable principles. He appealed to Congress that it was our American duty to go to war with Mexico and defend our border from an inferior country. Polk viewed this as an instigator of this war. Congress was not supportive of going to war. They were skeptical if the fighting actually took place on American soil or not. An up-and-coming House representative, Abraham Lincoln, proposed the spot resolutions to identify the exact spot the fighting took place. Congress eventually voted 174 to 14 in the House and 40 to 2 in the Senate to go to war. The war officially began on May 30, 1846. As war raged on in Mexico, Polk was in Washington, D.C., making decisions without ever being on a battlefield. He placed Zachary Taylor in charge of the majority of the troops. Taylor was popular among his troops because he was a common man of uniform. Polk saw this as a threat to his presidency. 
because rumors swirled in Washington about Taylor as the next president. He was winning battle after battle and getting more followers day by day. General Taylor signed an armistice with the Mexicans after an intense battle at Monterey. The Mexicans fled and Polk became infuriated by this political move, unbeknownst to him. President Polk wanted General Taylor gone, but he knew his constituents would not approve. He froze Taylor's troops at Buena Vista, taking the majority of his men for a new regiment. President Polk brought in Old Fuss and Feathers, Winfield Scott, to be the new commander of the army. They plotted the first amphibious battle at Veracruz. Scott was a veteran military man, and Polk knew he was not as popular with the people. If Scott would run for president, he would not win, and Polk would be safe. Polk continued the war with Mexico, and Mexico City being the ultimate goal. He believed that war could only be won by their capital city having an American flag flying over it. It's important to remember that Polk despised Mexicans. They were countless accounts of atrocities that took place during this war. Polk turned a blind eye to these because he saw it as an inevitable event of war. One example of these atrocities was the notorious Texas Rangers. They would pillage and destroy towns across the West by terrorizing the people and insulting, assaulting the women. When General Taylor and President Polk initially heard of the Rangers' actions, they wanted to arrest all 700 members, but then decided against it based on the assumption it would only be impossible to incarcerate all of them. This is correct, but the fact is the Texas Rangers got away with murder, theft, and rape. The end of the war came with the Americans capturing Mexico City and signing the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo on February 7, 1848. President Polk sent Nicholas Triss to negotiate prior to signing the treaty. He was not pleased with the time it was taking Trist to negotiate. Polk ordered him back to Washington, D.C., and he refused. Trist stayed four more months and the treaty was signed. Had he returned home, the negotiations would have deteriorated and the Mexican-American relations would be different today. The Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo stated for $15 million, the United States bought the territory of modern-day California, Nevada, Utah, Colorado, Wyoming, and Arizona. The other provisions detailed Mexican citizens living in the newly acquired territory, the practice of religion there, and the occupation of Native Americans in this territory. If the treaty had been signed a year later, Mexico would have refused. Gold was discovered in 1849 in California, and the infamous gold rush began. After the war, Polk did not seek a second term in office based on the mindset he needed relieved of his duty from the straining war. Once free from his presidency, Polk took a tour across the southern states speaking to crowds. The people were overjoyous to see him speak. He stopped at places along the East Coast, Gulf Coast, and along the Mississippi River. When he returned home to Tennessee, he became seriously ill from chloria, which he contracted while in New Orleans. There was an outbreak occurring in the city at this time during his tour. He died just three months after leaving office on June 15, 1849. He's buried at Polk Place Cemetery, but later moved to state capitol grounds in Nashville, Tennessee. President Polk entered office with a large political agenda. He won a new land acquisition to identify the Texas border, improve federal spending, and establish the Department of the Interior. Some historians say he left office the most successful president since George Washington in the accomplishment of his goals. The historiography of James K. Polk is interesting and in that there are historians who support his action and those who are adamantly to blame him for the war during the mid 19th century. In 1938, historian Richard Stenberg blamed Polk for the Mexican-American War. He felt Polk needed a war because he knew the Mexicans would fight if they were baited over the border in Texas. This being said, he had the Texas border been disputed civilly, war could have been avoided. Another historian, Samuel Bemis, favored Polk's decisions. He wrote his historiography in 1955 titled A Diplomatic History of the United States. Polk wanted new territory, especially Texas, but Bemis felt war could have been avoided and had just been the side effects of tension between the two countries. Former Aquinas College professor John C. Pinheiro wrote that there are two sides to the Polk presidency. One looks at the positives he accomplished. The other side looks at the negative effects of his presidency. 
One point Pinheiro makes is that he left the nation at the end of his term facing its greatest political and social crisis since the American Revolution. There is no right or wrong way to define Polk as a former president. It is all by the perspective historians look at it. James K. Polk was the 11th president of the United States who led America through one of the most treacherous wars, the Mexican-American War. He changed the political scope by addressing Congress and creating more open lines of communication. He acquired the Mexican territory that doubled the size of the United States. Polk created rifts between racial negotiations with the Mexicans and slavery disunion across America. No matter the historian's view, either good or bad, President Polk will be remembered for his valiant efforts he took to gain the great American West with actions taken during the Mexican-American War.